Now, we have state enterprises which have been in loss for decades now. And every political party had the chance to fix them. None has succeeded. With every passing government, you know, actually the situation has become worse. The PIA, the steel mills, the, uh, the, the power companies, you know, the railway and so on, you know. None has been able to fix it. And yet, every time there was an effort to privatize, it was undermined. It was blocked by one party or the other. Today, when we are having this discussion, there is a lot of despondency out there. The people who are unhappy about the recent elections, many are questioning the legitimacy of the current government. There is a major political party out there crying about the foul play and discrimination. And there's a very bad economic situation. Energy prices are going up. You know, the inflation remains high and for you know, for about many months now. Uh, so in this situation, you know, there are lots of people who are questioning, you know, the, where we are heading. And is there a hope? Can we improve? Will we come out of this situation? So I think it's really important that we reflect on, on, the, on the mistakes that we have committed. And in my view, uh, one major issue with that is that, you know, we have not established the rules of the game on which every stakeholder agrees. And then every stakeholder commits to respect those rules of the game. Now, we cannot play a game unless we have the rules, the agreed rules. And we cannot run a country unless we have agreed rules. Not just the agreed rules, but the rules that then we respect. So just imagine that, you know, we established a legal framework for elections. 2017 Act, a wonderful act, one of the best legislation in the world. I think even the European legislation doesn't match with that law. I mean, it provides all the details about the process. It provides all the protections against fraud, against uh, Misman against, you know, um, uh, rigging and so on. You know, it provides all the protection. But it presumes that state will be neutral. If the state is not neutral, then no law can be good enough. And this act is also not good enough. But this was a wonderful achievement when we had this law. But then it has not been respected. So we had the 2018 elections, which were controversial. And now we have the 2024 elections, which are again controversial. So this is just one example. Similarly, you know, we have a very good law on national accountability. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, if you independently get it reviewed from experts, they would say it's an excellent law. Again, you know, it provides a very good mechanism for the appointment of the leadership of the National Accountability Bureau. It is supposed to be neutral. It has all the protections. Now the expectation is that, you know, now National Accountability Bureau should work independently, fairly, honestly, and try to curb the problem of corruption. And imagine, now see, see what we have done with it. For the same reason, because, you know, perhaps we had the good intention when we enacted the law and established this forum, but then we started using it for partisan interests. So as a result, the whole legis legislation has been kind of uh, uh, discredited. The whole institution has been discredited. So Election Commission of Pakistan, despite the best legislation that we have, has been discredited. National Accountability Bureau, despite having the best, you know, again, legal framework, has been discredited. And these are just two examples. But when then we think of political parties, let's say, political parties are pillars, you know, in a, in a modern democratic system. Again, we see massive manipulations. Of course, political parties have committed their own mistakes. But, you know, uh, the way this manipulation takes place in our country, the way people, you know, change political parties sometimes, you know, through 
uh, coercive methods. They're made to change their political parties. So as a result, you know, we have even damaged, of course, political parties by their own poor performance have damaged their reputation, but also because of the other uh, players who played their role, you know, in, in uh, pushing forward their agenda so, and uh, committing those manipulations. So as a result, you know, we have political parties which are also kind of damaged and uh, have lost reputation. And, and, you know, yesterday, six judges writing to the Supreme Court what has been happening to them. So the judiciary. So imagine in a country where people don't trust uh, the judicial system. And not just common people, but actually uh, everyone has this perception that we cannot get justice. No one actually believes that we can get justice. Even the most powerful people sometimes think that today we may have our day, but tomorrow, you know, we may also be the victim. So I think the reason for this is the same, that, you know, which I mentioned earlier, that, you know, we, we don't have rules on which everybody agrees, including the civil, the military, the political parties, different interest groups. So how to achieve that? I mean, people have been talking about it. Of course, we need a national dialogue where every, every institution, every political party, whereby they sit together, they talk to each other, and they wholeheartedly agree on the rules of the game, and then they follow them. You know, Otherwise, if some state institutions decide to not to follow the, those rules, and the kind of a raw and the crude power then they can exercise, nothing would stand in their way. Uh, the other major problem, I think, that again undermines our governance and uh, explains why we can't have accountability is the kind of uh, elite capture that we have in our country. Uh, we often talk about it, but you know, we really, really, rarely dig into deeper into it. You know, so, and in my view, this explains why we can't have good governance, and it also explains why we can't have uh, a good economy. We have feudal lords in our country owning thousands of acres of lands, but they are not willing to pay taxes. And we have political parties which are unwilling to act. None of the political parties is willing to bring the agricultural economy into the, net, in, into the income tax net. I mean, they would come with, with all kinds of excuses. No one is saying, you, you know, you impose this tax on poor farmers, on smallholders. You know, we are saying that, you know, there should be one law, so if I have a certain income, so beyond that it should be taxed, beyond a certain limit. And it should be applied to all, it should apply to all kinds of incomes. But we have created exceptions. Agriculture, then territorial exceptions, Malakandavi and JB and so on, you know. So, so this is another example, you know, if elite capture, such a powerful interest, unwilling to pay taxes. Um, then, you know, just look around and, uh, and people have done studies that billions of dollars worth subsidies being, are going to the, to the elite, common people, or to the elite. So if there is unfair advantage in an economy, uh, which, is to, which uh, certain companies have over others, then of course there would be no competition and economy cannot grow. But for economy to grow, for the private sector to prosper, it is important there, that there are uh, there is easy entry, there is easy exit, and uh, uh, there is a uh, competition. So again, I think this is this is another um, aspect which explains why we can't have uh, improve economy and why we can't attract investments. Um, and then you know the, the, the Kundi sahab just mentioned privatization. So it has happened multiple times that the privatization commission would do its process, would spend years on it, months at least, and just before the culmination of the process, it would be blocked. So PIA, you know, we are again talking about its privatization, but we have been to this stage multiple times in the past. Now, that didn't succeed. And didn't su why it didn't succeed? Because of certain type of politics came into play. Uh, and that politics was being played not just by political parties, but other actors. If you want to undermine the government, you know, then you would want to do everything that is possible to undermine the government, including, you know, steel mills, for instance. So I'm, what I'm saying is that, you know, unless we really think about these deeper issues and the, we, we, est we establish sanctity of the rules of the game, I think it would be really hard for, for us to come out of it. Uh, but I think when we are 
and i think it's it has happened for many countries you know uh, in the past that you know when you are in this kind of a situation then there is an opportunity also that you know if you if at, at that stage you really uh, um, work together and you know uh, if you make the system changes, you know, fundamental changes, so then you can really come out of it. But the question is, are we really willing and prepared to do that? Uh, hopefully our leadership can pull, pull us through, through this and we'll, um, uh, we can improve. I think, uh, you know, while, you know, people are despondent for many reasons, and I have mentioned those reasons, it's a fact that, you know, we have also done a, some wonderful things, you know, over the years, we have achieved a lot also. Uh, it's not that our story is only of failures, you know. We have achieved a number of successes. If you compare to, compare to where we were in 1947, you know, we have built new cities, beautiful cities like Islamabad. Lahore has grown from a city of about 400,000 people to a city of 15, 15 million people. Karachi, about 100,000 100, people, and now it's one of the mega cities in the world. So. You know, now we have educational institutions almost in every part of the country, in the rural areas, you know. When I was growing up, you know, we didn't have schools in most, most villages. Uh, now, you know, we have girls, you know, the, whose numbers has, has surpassed in our, uh, compared to boys, you know, in the higher educational institutions. So we have lots of success to our credit as well. But uh, we also have challenges and, you know, but unless we make these, these two major changes that we stop, stop, we start respecting uh, our rules and we do something about this elite capture so that um, uh, there's a more competitive market and there's, there are equal opportunities uh, for common uh, for everybody. So I think we can definitely come out of it and we'll, be, we'll come out stronger. Thank you very much.